Have you ever planned your day to the T, blocked out the perfect schedule to be productive and get things done, just to fall behind by lunchtime? Studying, working out, working, family, friends, and hobbies. If you're like me, these things are all really important things in your life, but they seem so impossible to juggle at times. Since starting medical school, I've gotten a lot better at managing my time and being able to dabble in all these activities. This is especially the case because I'm someone who tries their best with setting boundaries with school and enjoys having a lot of hobbies. A lot of times we get really caught up in trying to be the best employee or trying to be the best student that we forget to work on ourselves outside of these things. And I'm definitely guilty of this, especially in the past. There's times where I've really struggled with just kind of working on these aspects of my life outside of my profession. And that's why I wanted to make this video. I went from a pretty bad medical student to one that's been doing very well in his courses. I've been consistent at posting videos on YouTube every single week for almost a year now. Having been training for a marathon the past few months and have still had time to lift weights, hang out with friends, and go to concerts. Now I don't say that to flex or anything like that, that's more of just me kind of showing you guys that I've gone pretty good with time management and this is how I get everything done in a day. The first time management tip is one that makes everything else possible. If you don't follow this tip first, you can go ahead and throw the rest in the garbage because they're not gonna work. The first thing that you need to do is get your priorities together. It's impossible to block out times for the things that matter when you don't have the things that matter clearly identified. When there isn't a clear delineation between things that are highly impactful in your life and things that are not, it's easy for your schedule to become cluttered and ineffective. This means you not only will become less productive with work and studying, but you will also have less time for the things and the people that you love. The times where I did really poorly in medical school, I felt like I was kind of losing a grip on the things that were important. I didn't really have my priorities in order. And because of that, I struggled in almost every single thing, not just school, but my relationships with fitness, all of the above, right? And the system that I developed for myself is actually super, super simple, but super effective. I have a mental label in my head now of the different priorities in my life and every single priority in my life falls into one of these categories. It's either the essentials, the high impact, or the wants, right? And every single thing in my life needs to fall within these three categories. Getting into the categories, our essentials are things that are absolutely non-negotiables in your life. This is your list, so what I consider essential may not be the same to you. The two things that should be on everyone's essentials list is going to be sleep and eating though. These are physiological demands of being alive, but there's more to it than just that. Try your best to get high quality sleep, seven to eight hours a night, and eat a balanced diet that not only makes you feel good, but that you enjoy. Eating a healthier diet and a diet that you enjoy and getting a good amount of sleep is gonna trickle into every single thing that you do. It's gonna improve your productivity, your performance, your mood, your happiness. It's just a good thing for everyone to focus on overall. I also have working out under my list of essentials. This is because exercise has become a cornerstone of my daily routine, and I literally wouldn't feel like a day was complete or accomplish without it, save for the days that I have for rest days, of course. The feeling of getting stronger, faster, being able to look into the mirror and being proud of the reflection, that's a feeling that's truly unmatched. Working out's just something that gives me an outlet outside of school to relieve stress, it just makes me happier, improves my mood, it builds confidence in me, and it just feels good to have a goal that is, you know, something that I'm working towards achieving outside of just school. It makes me feel really good about myself. I also include studying in my essentials because as a medical student, this is what my world currently revolves around. Another really important essential is spending time with my loved ones. A lot of the times, especially when school or work gets really busy, it's hard to remember that these people are our priorities and are a large part of the reason why we do what we do. Now the next category is what I call the high impact category. These are priorities in your life that mean a lot to you, can play a really, really large part in your life, but they're not the absolute vitals or essentials. Some of the high impact activities on my list include meditating and this YouTube channel. Meditating is something that I've incorporated regularly into my routine for a while now, and I've definitely seen the positive effects trickle into my life. And this YouTube channel is a hobby that I've really been enjoying since, you know, almost a year now, because I grew up watching YouTube videos and I learned a lot from watching these YouTube videos and it really did help shape me into the person that I am today. And I hope that, you know, at least one person out there watching can get some kind of benefit from watching my YouTube channel. That's the whole goal of my channel. So this is a hobby that has meant a lot to me. These things 
these are just examples of some really high impact priorities that can have a large part in my life, can you know really set me up for the future, but they're not absolutely vital, right? And again, my high impact list might look a little bit different than yours and that's okay. The last category is going to be your wants. These are things that you're interested in learning or doing, but they don't hold as much weight in your life. This doesn't necessarily mean that they are important to you or things that you don't care about. This just means that they're a lower priority and would be the first things to go if you had to make sacrifices moving forward. For me, these include things like breaking, guitar, ukulele, playing video games, basketball, snowboarding. As much as I enjoy all these activities, I have a very clear understanding that they aren't going to get me to where I want in life, and as such, they aren't a high priority. When given the chance, however, I will definitely still try to enjoy them as much as possible. The next time management tip I have for you guys is setting up your schedule in a block schedule. And that's exactly what it sounds like. You're setting up blocks of time and scheduling the activities that you need to get done in a day. This just helps streamline your day, helps you kind of organize your mind throughout the day and understand what you need to get done and when it needs to be done. I typically make my agenda for the next day at night before winding down for bed. That way I know exactly what to expect when I wake up. This is a very common technique, but one pitfall that many people make when time blocking their schedules is failing to find a balance between fluidity and rigidity. If the times that you block become so rigid, you're going to find yourself feeling like a robot throughout the day, and if something unexpected happens in your day, which something unexpected always happens, your entire plan completely melts down. Now this is how I schedule my days. I categorize different times throughout the day, and I put the activities to get done within those categories, and you know, it's just a soft to-do list or soft um, deadline. If I find myself in a flow and I don't want to stop doing a certain activity, I'm just going to let myself keep going and take advantage of it. If not, as long as I get every single thing done within the time frame, that's okay. And like I said earlier, these deadlines can't be so rigid and so strict where you feel like you're constantly running behind throughout your day. And on the same note though, you can't schedule too much time for certain activities. Like it doesn't take three hours for you to cook breakfast, right? That just doesn't make any sense. And that actually leads me to what I wanted to talk about next, which is Parkinson's Law. We've all been in this situation before. You give yourself all morning to watch a lecture, clean your room, do your homework, whatever. How long does it actually take to do these things? A couple of hours maybe? Now how long does it actually take you? Probably the whole morning, right? So Parkinson's Law is just something that defines the phenomenon where if you assign a certain amount of time to do an activity, you usually end up taking that entire time no matter what. If you gave yourself 30 minutes to clean your room, you could probably clean your room in 30 minutes. If you gave yourself three hours to clean your room, it would probably take three hours. And the crazy part is, your room wouldn't be any more clean within that three hours, right? It'd probably look pretty much the same. And look guys, there's no judgment here. I think everyone falls into this trap. I fall into this trap. It's just something that I try to be conscious of and try to avoid, but you know, we've all been there before. One time I was assigned an essay. I think this was like freshman year of college from a professor. He gave us this essay in August, the very beginning of the semester, and it wasn't due until December, the very end. And you bet every single person waited until the very end, like either December or like Thanksgiving break to do this essay. And the crazy part was I was dreading this essay the entire semester. I was avoiding it like the plague. And when I actually did it, it took like two hours, which is crazy, right? But if I just spent two hours doing it in the very beginning in August, I wouldn't have been so stressed out through the semester about it. I could have just got it done and it would have taken two hours. Instead, it took the entire semester because I let it weigh in on me, stress me out the entire semester and did it just to find out that it wasn't that bad. It took the whole semester. And the crazy part of Parkinson's Law is that the quality of my essay didn't get any better even though I took the entire semester to finally do it, right? If I spent those two hours in the very beginning, it would have been the same quality. Right? So that's the whole point of Parkinson's law is that the quality of work doesn't go down. You just can't give yourself too much time to do something because you might end up just getting lazy procrastinating or whatever, and then it just takes way longer than it has to. Does cooking and eating lunch really take you a whole hour? Does completing 100 flashcards really take an entire hour? Does finishing an hour long lecture really take three hours? 
most likely your answer is going to be no. So start utilizing Parkinson's law by giving yourself artificial deadlines to complete your tasks in a more efficient manner. Now don't go too crazy here obviously because you don't want to take this to the extremes because one, it's going to stress you out and you're going to feel like you're constantly behind throughout the day, but two, you're not going to eat breakfast or lunch in three minutes either, right? So again, the whole goal here is balance. You want to find a amount of a lot of time per activity where you're able to feel a sense of urgency, but not be in fight or fly mode throughout your entire day. And that balance is going to look different for everybody. The goal here is balance. One of the most common pitfalls that I've found that a lot of people fall into, myself included, is multitasking. Multitasking is actually one of the biggest sneaky time wasters, but for some reason, it seems like everyone knows that multitasking is bad, but everyone still thinks that they can do it or it doesn't apply to them. But if you're watching this video, this includes myself as well, multitasking isn't making you more productive. In fact, it's actually decreasing your level of productivity and you're actually wasting more time. What's better is if you're gonna go have fun, go have fun. If you're gonna go work or study, go work or study. Don't fall in that weird in-between phase of I'm kind of working, kind of studying at the same time. That's kind of nonsense and we all know it, but we still just convince ourselves that we can do it, but we all know that we can't. Let's say you decide to try and do flashcards while watching anime. What could have been your time to recharge and unplug is now something that is actually draining your energy. Once the episode is over, you're not going to feel recharged and to make it worse, your retention of the material that you reviewed is much less because your attention was divided the entire time. You are only passively going through the motions. In this situation, you quite literally got the worst of both worlds. Instead of wasting your time trying to study and trying to watch anime at the same time, create two different time blocks, one to have fun and one to be productive. Lately, I've been getting really into anime again, so that's my protected time. I don't want anything to bleed into it. I want whatever I'm watching, whatever I'm reading to get my full undivided attention, right? And that actually helps me when I go back to studying because I actually feel refreshed. I allow myself to fully indulge in the things that I enjoy and that makes me feel well rested and then I allow myself to hyper focus on work and I actually get things done quicker and overall the having fun and studying takes a lot less time. Time that I can use on watching another episode. I always found it a bit weird, especially growing up K through 12 in grade school here. A lot of teachers used to really glorify like, wow, you're doing so great. You're able to multitask. You're able to do these things, at, like two things at once. And it was like this huge coveted skill that they would really, really push. But as I'm an adult learner now in medical school, I realized that multitasking doesn't work. If you're working a job, multitasking probably doesn't really work either. So it's just kind of interesting that we were kind of lied to and told, hey, this is such a great skill to have, you should always be working on it, when in reality, it's just wasting our time. Now, there definitely are times where multitasking can be productive. The only time I really multitask now is when I pair a mindless task with something that's productive or fun. For example, I've been listening to a lot of podcasts during my marathon training thus far. I'll also occasionally walk on an incline while doing flashcards at the gym. The running or walking is pretty mindless, so it doesn't take away from my focus with what I'm doing. One of the biggest pitfalls I've found when it comes to time management as well is someone gets super excited to become productive, really focus on themselves, work on themselves, which is awesome, right? It's a great first step, but they're so quick to schedule in all the draining activities that leave them absolutely exhausted by the end of the day. Now, don't get me wrong here, right? I love balance and I'm promoting you guys to go out and have fun, but hard work is absolutely mandatory in order to accomplish your goals. With that being said though, having fun is absolutely mandatory to reach these goals as well, right? You need to unwind, you need to be able to relax and just have an outlet for your stress. And fun doesn't necessarily mean, you know, going out late at night, messing up your sleeping schedule, getting drunk, having a hangover the next day and kind of just ruining what you have going on. But fun can still be something that's in your daily schedule that helps you recharge. When I say schedule fun, I mean schedule in the activities that you feel recharged from. For me, I feel a lot better and re-energized after working out, walking Luca, and watching anime. So I make sure to schedule these things in my day. That way I'm getting little boosts of energy throughout. These activities are going to be very different for everyone, but I recommend scheduling these in during times where you would be most mentally drained. For example, I usually like scheduling workouts in after watching a few hours of lecture because 
Well, watching lectures suck, even when the material is interesting. By doing this strategically, I have the energy needed to accomplish all my tasks throughout the day, all while making time for some of my hobbies. When I failed the first year of medical school, I actually studied a lot more and scheduled a lot less fun. This made me feel super burned out and was a large reason why I ultimately failed that year. Fast forward to now, my fun and my life outside of school is a huge priority for me. And guess what? My grades and academic performance skyrocketed. While managing your time and making your schedule and trying to accomplish these big goals that you have, just remember that having fun is absolutely mandatory, it's good for you, and it is productive. Rest is productive. Life doesn't end when you graduate medical school, graduate law school, graduate college, or you know get the promotion that you've been working for, right? Those are all part of life, and life is happening right now. You need to be figuring out ways to have that balance and have fun right now. You're gonna have to work hard and make sacrifices when you're going towards those really big goals of yours, right? That's inevitable. However, it's really important for you guys to understand that when there is time, schedule in fun, have a chance to unwind, and actually enjoy the journey. Because when you enjoy the journey, you'll actually go a lot farther than if you just go so hard that you burn yourself out. Now, if you made it this far in my video, thank you guys so much for your support. I greatly appreciate it. And I'd love to know, how do you manage your time? What are some tips or tricks that you use that maybe I shared or maybe I didn't share that you think could help everybody else? Go ahead and leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.